This, my friend, is a real juicy topic. Failure to launch a mind pit that you could be stuck in if you have been doing all the things, the brainstorming, the researching, the planning, the preparing, and you've been gathering and gathering and you're excited, but at the end of the day, you cannot commit to launching your new business, whether it be a micro school, learning pod, tutoring business, a preschool, you are stuck possibly in paralysis analysis. Maybe you're feeling alone. Maybe you're feeling as if you don't have the perfect plan. You don't have everything put into place. And this is only a distraction, a confusing lie that is keeping you in stagnation and not getting you to where you are destined to go. I know what this feels like all too well, and I'm so grateful for the people that I've surrounded myself with that have pushed me and encouraged me, one of them being my husband, the other one, the other big group of people being our Facebook group and many other people. We encourage you to join our Teacher Let Your Light Shine micro school community, and we encourage you to get into action. Get into our Facebook group. If you are nervous to ask a question, post in there anonymously, listen, I need help with, and then you fill in the blank. You can post in there if you don't feel like doing, you know, putting your name in there. We have people posting anonymously. We are here for you. I have been really trying to pour into my story of leaving public education, how hard I had to fight to get over it, how hard it was for me to let go and to start something new, but I felt called to do it. I've talked to you about transitioning and resigning and starting something new and going and just purging out all of the things that have caused you to be fearful and really start attaching on to what it is that you're called to do. In today's episode, we're going to address the failure to launch. You've got this idea. We're going to address it. And then I'm going to give you four ways to overcome the failure to launch so that you are able to get out of this negative mindset and into a positive direction for your life, for your impact, for your income, and for all of the incredible opportunities that wait ahead of you. Let's get into it. Welcome, teacher, to the Let Your Light Shine podcast. If you're searching for the freedom and permission to design the life you love as a teacher, you're in the right place. I'm on a mission to help teachers just like you build their own dream school or homeschooling business. In this present day, the world needs you, teacher friend, to step out in faith and give students an education they love and so deserve. In this podcast, I will teach you how to start a fulfilling and profitable homeschooling business that lights you up. I'm Mackenzie Oliver, former elementary teacher and instructional coach, gone homeschool teacher and business builder. I'm here to empower you to step outside the classroom and choose the experiences, the curriculum, and all the moments that put a smile on your face and your students. Does it seem like a dream? Well, it did to me until God opened the doors and made it reality. Together, we are breaking through fears and moving the crowd. So get out your notebook, sharpen your pencil. It's time to get your teach on. Well, without further ado, we have to get this podcast started with a big thank you to Owls and Acorns for the podcast review. So sweet. Thank you so much for your wonderful, encouraging podcast owls and acorn said so glad i found you this has been a godsend for me and praise god thank you thank you thank you this is the only podcast i have found that is exactly what i've been looking for that is so amazing i have been listening to various ones but need but had to imagine the content applied to my situation i appreciate you and your passion for teachers who run a homeschool business well praise god owls and acorns thank you so much I'm so grateful that this has helped you and I'm so grateful that I got out of the mind pit of failure to launch because I had to have people help me to get me to sit behind this microphone and share my story because I didn't think that I had all the details. I didn't know what to do with podcasting. I didn't know how to start it. The same thing with the micro school, the same thing with leaving different schools to go to other schools, the the same way that I felt whenever I moved from Missouri to Florida It's just a process that we have to all go through. Failure to launch. It's all about transitioning. It's literally going from one place and just walking over the bridge 
to the other. And a lot of times we need someone to hold our hand, to take us by the side and talk to us the whole way so that we don't look down and feel like we're going to fall off the bridge. We need someone to help us. So I'm so grateful for you. Thank you, Owls and Acorns. I'm so thankful for all of our listeners. Thank you for taking the time to leave a podcast review. I know it's 30 seconds and 30 seconds feels like a lot. I totally understand. However, you're making such a big difference in my life whenever those pop up and I read them. Trust me when I tell you that sitting behind a microphone in your closet, which is where I'm at right now, feels so good, especially whenever you see a nice podcast review that keeps you going, okay, I'm going to make one more today. And that's exactly what happened. I'm sitting here in my off in my bedroom slash office in my closet. I walked into my closet and my husband even popped his head in here. He goes, you're getting really acclimated. I'm sitting in a gamer chair in my closet. It is a walk-in closet and I've got a blanket over me, my laptop on my lap, my notebook beside me and my microphone in my lap as well. And I saw that podcast review and I'm like, that is exactly what I needed. I think I can make another one. And that's where I'm at today. I am giving you this podcast titled Failure to Launch Ways to Overcome This Failure to Launch Syndrome because it can be very easy to brainstorm and to dream and come up with this really great business idea, but putting it into action is where people often stumble. And then you might be going, well, do I have to create this formalized plan because it's got to be this like dreaded business plan it feels intimidating and I don't even know if I should do that because if you are new here, I do have on our website www.teachersletyourlightshine.com slash resources and it is the eight step to building your business roadmap. I encourage you to go down, go there. It's real pretty and colorful. Print it off, hang it up. I've had people hang it up on the refrigerators, put it in their front of their binder as they're starting Step four is to build your business blueprint. It's not a business plan, but it's a blueprint. It's what I help coach my clients through as we're building their business, your business. You don't have to create a school like mine. It can be a tutoring business, a learning pod. It can be a micro school, homeschooling business. I set across with you after you give me your answers to the questions that I ask you whenever you book a coaching session. My husband and I go over them. We create strategies for you. So by the time I sit down with you, I've got goals, priorities, and strategies already set for you to help guide our discussion. And of course, we add more and we tweak and we change. But it's so important that you have the fundamentals down. And so I hope you come up with a business plan. But sometimes it can feel dreaded. Like, I really don't want to do this because I don't know all of the details. And I absolutely get it. That's why I have coaching programs. That's why I've got our business bundle. I say start there. Start. A lot of people start with a coaching session and then they get the business bundle or they get the business bundle and then they go into the coaching session. But either way, we are here for you. We've got the resources. The business bundle definitely is a part of that business blueprint. And as a matter of fact, it's the first thing that you should do before the business blueprint get started because it is your mission, your vision, and all the foundational pieces. So if you feel like you're great at coming up with ideas, but you're struggling to take action, then this is definitely what you can listen to to help you. So what is the trick of launching instead of failure to launch? We want to actually start launching instead of pausing. I think a lot of times we look at a project like starting a school and We want all of the details and it is a project. And whenever you start a project, even if it's just remodeling your kitchen or sometimes a a, a project really is anything that has more than two steps. So even let's say for an example, my daughter getting her permit, there's, there was, there's multiple steps in order for her to get her permit. We had to go to the driver, to the DMV. We had to get the little booklet. She had to register online. She had to start studying. Like we had so many, that's a project. It's not just a one little thing that we mark off our list. Get your permit. No, there were multiple steps. So when it's start your business, there's multiple steps. And so the hardest thing that people have is putting it on paper. And and I struggle with this myself sometimes. As much as I love to write and I just have papers upon papers of things that I've written, sometimes whenever I look at a project, I look at it and go, what would be my first step? And if I don't know my first step, I won't write anything down. When really I just need to write down things underneath it. 
So for an example, it could be, who am I going to serve? What ages do I want to have? And just start asking yourself questions. That would be number one, putting things into bite-sized pieces. Because so often people get overwhelmed with the amount of work involved. So instead of trying to attack everything at once, come up with a dedicated plan of action. This can just be a simple little list. And once you just start writing down a few tasks, your list go, okay, now I've actually tangibly written some things down. This is starting to make a little bit more sense to me and it gives you momentum. It's not a perfect plan. It just gives you momentum. But sometimes we are in paralysis analysis because we don't have the entire plan. And here's the truth. You never will. And I, I really do believe it's because we have we were created by God in his image and he is an all-knowing, amazing, trusting, incredible God. And we long for perfection because that's how does God designed life. He designed it to be perfect and to be fruitful and for us to live this incredible life where it was bliss and we didn't have any worries. But that's not how that's not how the story unfolded. So now we have to live with the fact that things are not going to be perfect and we're not going to have all the details. That's just not how it is. And unfortunately, our human nature has a hard time with this, me included. So now just put down, start a school. What can I do? Get on www.teacherslightyourlightshide.com slash resources. Okay, what do I do from there? Go to my free resources, start printing them out. That right there, it's like, oh my gosh, okay, I've done something. Print all my free resources out. It'll go to your inbox. If it goes to your junk mail, make sure you check your junk mail because it could go there. It goes to your inbox immediately and print those things out. That'd be step one. Just do that. And then listen to, and then put, listen to an episode once a week or listen to Teacher Light Your Light Shines ap- episode Tuesday, Friday. Do research on getting an LLC. Okay, just continue to write those things down. Plug into the community. Read Teacher Let Your Light Shine's Facebook community once a day every morning. And just start getting your knowledge right there. But I think the other important fact is that you actually get yourself into action by writing down bite-sized pieces and give yourself small little wins, like going and printing things off the teacherletyourlightshine.com resource tab. All right? And that gives you some momentum, you get your binder, you print out those resources, you put them in there and you're like, whoo, okay, I've done something. And you start looking over them and it's going to give you some more clarity. Number two, create a roadmap. And this is so good because guess what? I already created a roadmap for you. I did. It's your eight steps to building your, your micro school or homeschooling business. Because once you've put things into bite-sized pieces, now you've got to go, okay, I need to have a plan in place for this business venture. A roadmap gives us direction. So after you brainstorm some things down on your number one, putting things into bite-sized pieces, and you might be like, I don't even know if this goes here. It doesn't matter. Just do it. Just write some things down. Print out that roadmap and go, hmm, get students. Well, that's step five. That's marketing with a clear message. So I'm not there yet. But hey, all of these little things that I put down on my paper, my little brain dump of bite-sized piece brain dump, let me go look at that roadmap that McKinsey made And let me see here. I wonder if this piece goes underneath step five. Oh, I've been worried about my curriculum. Well, gosh, that's step six. I need to go all the way back to basics. Number one, get some clarity and foundation. Step two, determine my niche and my value. What am I going to offer? Step three, find my location. Oh, wait, I already have a location. Or Oh, yeah, I could call that church down the street. Step four, build my business blueprint. Oh, I got to make sure I get my business bundle documents. Oh, yeah, that's something that I can do. Let me go ahead and get that. And now I put that in my binder. And now you went from having no plan, no idea, being overwhelmed, not getting into action, not launching. And now you're starting to put some things together. I'm just, I'm so proud of you because I, I see you doing this. I do. I see you going and getting on the computer and starting to just print some things out or just sitting there with a piece of notebook paper and writing some things down. Number three, to go from pausing into launching, ask for help. I know sometimes it's easier to ask for help than to waste time on tasks that you are not proficient in. I know. But do you ever hire someone to clean your house or fix your pool or handle your changing the oil in your car, you hire people to help you with those things. Why spend time on something that you can easily outsource and pay someone or something that's already either been done for you or to get more information, 
give yourself a return on your investment. You can either pay for it or you can hop into our group and you can also get free information as well. That's the Teacher Let Your Light Shine micro school community. Or we can set face to face in a coaching session or multiple coaching sessions on your time and on your and within your time frame to get your business going and started and following through or helping it to grow. If you're worried about spending too much money before you already have a steady stream of revenue, I want you to consider how much it will take you, how much time it will take you to work on projects that you do not have the necessary skills bandwidth or previous knowledge to accomplish effectively. And I sat around for two years thinking about a podcast and thinking I could do it all on my own before I finally just bit the bullet, bought the course, paid for the coach and bought the other course. And I'm like, I could have done this two years ago and I could have already gotten a return on my investment. So investing in your business is often part of the process and you will always get a return on it. So ask for help. And don't just go and get help from anywhere and pay anybody anything. Do your research. Ask people for help if they've bought the business bundle, if they've purchased group coaching or 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 one-on-one coaching. Ask people. Ask people if they started what you've started. Ask people if they're from the same state that you're in. And then this gives you some more momentum to move forward. And number four, bring in your circle. I know you've probably heard of the circle of trust. But if you've ever watched the movie Meet the Parents starring uh, Robert De Janeiro, then you may be smiling right now because pitching your business to the people that you trust can be a vital indicator of success or failure. I suggest that you have a questionnaire ready so that you can ask for specific feedback. I know that there are people who've actually done interest surveys about their school or their program and they've given it to families and friends and people who've already expressed interest. So bring in your circle, start asking them some questions and be open to their suggestions. Sometimes the greatest advice is the one thing that you don't want to hear. There have been times where people have sat with me and they're like, I really want to build my business business this way. And I've talked to my, and then my husband and I, we've already talked about it. We go over and I'm like, I support you. I think, however, you should start with this step first. And here's why. And then they come back to me and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I did that because I almost went the other way. And, you know, it would have all worked out in the meantime. Or I mean, it would have all worked out in the end. Don't get me wrong. It's always going to work out. However, bringing in your circle, finding people that you can trust and that you can get some good feedback from is very vital. Plug into our Facebook group, start asking the questions, hire the coach, create an interest survey, ask people at your school, ask your neighbors, ask your family members. If you're going to be offering a service, ask them what they would pay for, what would they want? How does this, how does this look on a day-to-day basis or on a weekly basis or on a yearly basis or what age groups do you think that you should serve or should or are parents looking for you to serve? These are all very vital pieces of information and I'm just excited because I know that if you implement these, you will start gaining some really great traction. So number one, put things into bite-sized pieces. You might not have the order yet. Just start brain dumping. Number two, create a roadmap and then go download your roadmap. That is www.teachersletyourlightshine.com slash resources or you could just do slash roadmap. Number three, ask for help. And number four, bring in your circle of trust. Hope we see you over in our Facebook group at Teacher Let Your Light Shines Micro School Community. And until next time, keep shining your teacher light. Hey, hey, teacher friend. Thanks so much for listening to today's show. I pray it inspired you, touched you, or challenged you in some way. Because we are making big shifts and using our teaching gifts for God's glory like never before. I'm so grateful for you. The number one way you can support this show is to leave a written review on Apple Podcasts and also share this with another teacher. Come join me in the Virtual Teachers Lounge, known as the Teacher Let Your Light Shine Facebook group. Until next time, keep shining your teacher light. The world needs you.